Right, stripping a JMC valve, the first and foremost thing to remember, always start at this end, get the plug out. You'll see inside that there's a nut. Use a socket spanner. The reason that this is important is that is the tie rod that locks the bottom shaft and the top shaft together. And if you don't undo that, you'll never get the shaft out. And unfortunately, people will try and pull it out and think, gee, it's really tight. But you'll never <laughs> get it out. If you have a, a puller, use that because the top of the shaft is drilled and tapped that you can pull. But on the small valves, the quick and easy way is just to clamp it in a vise and lever it up. Out she comes. Now the important thing to remember is on the bottom of the shaft you'll see there's a line dictating the position of the disc. And what that does is, if your valve has been assembled and is in line, you take the actuator off, you can always tell what position the valve is in because it's got the marking on top of the shaft. We'll come back to that. The second thing is we have to take out the bottom shaft and I'll just get an extractor rod. <laughs> right, next step we have is to get the bottom shaft out. The easy way is to let the weight of the valve do the work for you. That is the bottom shaft minus any grease. Now comes the easy part. We're going to take the disc out of the valve. Move it to the fully open position. Now, if you try and take it out straight out like that, you're going to have to ride over the spherical bottom of the liner. You'll see that it's dished up, so you'd actually have to ride over a smaller diameter. And the way to get around this is you, you tilt the disc sideways like that and push it out like that. Now, the, the interesting part now is if you look at the shaft, you'll say it's got a square end to it and if you've got a square end here driving into the disc how is it not going to be able to sit at 90 degrees and a very simple reason is that you'll see on the corners of the spindle you have a round side and a round edge and a flat edge and another flat edge opposing it so you can only install the spindle at 180 degree steps the top of the disc has got this little spigot sticking out. That's not a pin going through. That's to tell you that this is the top of the disc. And you take your shaft, and you'll see if I try and put it in 90 degrees out, it don't go. Turn it around so the little shaft lines up, and it fits. And you can rotate it around again through 180 degrees. So, you just have to be careful when assembling. To take the liner out, it, as Ross very accurately advised earlier, simply get your fingers behind the liner, pull it towards the center of the valve, push down to get it out the top spigot, and out she comes. As we spoke about earlier, you'll see that the disc is yeah. spherically machined so that it's both round and it's also round in that direction. And it has the corresponding pad in the liner itself. 
and again the seal is perfect where the disc meets the liner. Yep. You have the compressor force which is contained by the body here so you've got a very high loading so you don't have a backup seal on the shaft. The seal is at that point there. That is where it seals. There is a an excluder on the top of the shaft and that is to stop dirt and water getting into the valve body from outside. So this really is, is the heart of the liner. It's available in materials EPDM, uh, nitrile, hypalon, viton, epichloridine, a whole load of different materials. But the standard that we carry is uh, EPDM, which is benzoid peroxide cured and has a top working temperature of 130 degrees C continuous. It's also good, very good with uh, waters. It's FDA approved for use on water. Um, it's a very useful material. To put it back into the valve, it's just the reverse of what you have been doing. And we'll, we'll take the liner. I'm going to do it from this side because I can get my right thumb in. And we, what we want to do is make sure the bottom spigot goes into the hole it's supposed to go into, like that. Is there a top and bottom turn on the... On the no, it's, it's totally uh, reversible. reversible. So we push the bottom spigot in, and the liner is thin, so you can actually deform it quite severely. And you, you now have to make sure that it is properly located. And then it's just a matter of... And just push it top and bottom to make sure it's locked in. And if, if we need grease for doing that, that was what grease should be used. Right, it's essential that you use Molica Triple One silicon grease. Any hydrocarbon grease will be a problem because EPDM and hydrocarbon grease just really do not go together. Together. This is your dark corning Molica Triple One. Nice new tube. And it's a very thick grease, so it's quite difficult to get it out of the tube. It's important that you get grease into the shaft passage. Because that's the only lubrication it'll ever get. So you do it top and bottom. The bigger valves are easier because you can get your finger in. <laughs> and it's also important that the journals where the liner is going to carry the disc are well greased. So we do that top and bottom. Put too much grease in. To put the disc back is just the... Before the disc goes back on that, is it's curved on the disc shaft itself to increase the flow capacity? Yeah. This, this disc is what they call lenticular in shape. In other words, it flows, the flow path through that is very good. So JMC butterfly valves have got very good flow characteristics. Just turn that 90 degrees sideways so you can show that flow there. It's interesting. So again, to reassemble, we make sure that the drive spigot is at the top. We put it in again at an angle across the journal. And it's important that you 
get it into perfectly central position. You're just looking in alignment. So the top if you look, yeah, if you look down through there. We then take the shaft, and bearing in mind we have to line it up, we get the line on the shaft in line with the spindle, with the disc. And then we stand above it and just make sure what you can do is use something as a, as a reference that it is... It's difficult to see the... Uh, where's an 11? The 11 spanner there. Thank you. Theoretically, it's now perfectly aligned. And if we if we're confident it's perfectly aligned. <laughs> That's the spindle inserted. Excellent. And the bottom is the reverse again. Purely, we're going to push it through. And again, we'll use the weight of the, the valve to push it home. And Now I have the bottom spin. Um, seeing as this is a bottomless socket, we might have some trouble <laughs> getting it on here. On the other hand, maybe not. If you can just grab that. What we're going to do now is simply and again we need to tighten this enough to stop the spindle rotating, the bottom spindle rotating, but obviously you don't use full leverage and strip it off. You now have a valve which is completely assembled. What we do is check that there's no hidden glitches. And as you can see, you can rotate this through 360 degrees. You don't doesn't have to be in any particular position. But being clockwise closing, we just leave it in that position there. And you're saying as the size and the diameter of the valve increases, getting the liner out becomes, in fact, easier? It becomes easier, indeed. Being so thin, it's still flexible. Yeah. And last but not least, this again is to exclude exterior water or muck getting into the valve. And that's your valve reassembled and ready so to go. The code number for this type of valve again? Uh, this is the JMC 31300, which denotes a, a ductile iron body uh, CF3M or 316 stainless steel disc and the EPDM liner for 130 degrees centigrade.